guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and again we're out in the greenhouse today to start um, as I wanted to show you guys my formal solution for the nutrient enriched soil leaking down into the tubs. My supplies have finally come from the greenhouse manufacturer or supplier that I bought from. Uh, so let's take a look. I went with a really inexpensive solution. I picked up these like 50 cent a piece plastic trays that I can set both the starter pots and then my larger pots once I start to um, transplant plants. And what this will do is it will allow the pots to sit in some water so that I only have to water, you know, every couple of days rather than morning and night when they are just sitting in the greenhouse. And it prevents any spillage from going down into the tubs. Um, now these drip trays are reusable. They're a heavy duty plastic. You can see they have the little grooves in the bottom um, so that the pots sit out of the water and I'm hoping that'll work out well. Uh, one of you guys, my friend Mary, actually sent me a link to some self-watering pots which I may attempt to make in a smaller form but you can see like my onions are growing really really well. Um, and some of the starter pots are really starting to sprout and I expect that all of these will again here soon in the next couple days. And I wanted to show you as well while we're out here, um, the lilies from being fertilized have started to throw massive, massive amounts of new leaves and just have had rejuvenated growth. So I'm really gr glad I got that started. Um, and here in the next few days we'll work on moving these out into the big bin but for now they're doing all right in the greenhouse here. The plan is, um, and I bought all container varieties of the vegetables I'm going to grow, is to grow them in these 12 inch pots in the greenhouse. Um, so I ordered 50 of them. I'm not sure how many I'll need. So today I'm going to go ahead and move all the plants that were in these two bins down into the aquatic tubs just so that I can clear some space in order to prepare for more vegetable gardening. Now some of these will end up moving outside, but for now I need their space. So they get ejected. Oh, I wanted to show you guys too, my mosaic plant is bouncing back. I was kind of bummed about how crappy it looked but as I expected, it, it's rebounding. So once I move these, we'll take a look. You can see also that the water celery has rebounded. See it has new rosettes forming there at the surface. You can also see all the dead plant matter floating around it, but I'm super stoked that it is coming back. So when you grow sweet potatoes, you can't just, well, you can just plant the potato, but then you won't get much of a harvest. You have to grow what are called twills. So you sprout the potato and then it grows these little, well, they get massive green shoots that grow out of the water with roots down in the water. And then you plant those in soil and wherever the nodes of the green part touch the soil, they send roots down and that's where you get sweet potatoes. So I am in the process of sprouting sweet potatoes to add to my potato bin. Um, while this tub is draining, let's go take a look at that real quick. Now this is a box my husband found in the trash um, and I just, we just uh, cut it down. And what I'll do is I will drill holes in the bottom. Obviously I'll remove this excess lumber. Again, we like to upcycle and reuse things, so when you find something like this, you look for a purpose. And this is actually really good for potatoes because it's elevated off the ground. And once I drill holes all through the bottom, um, it'll have really good drainage. And I can fill this with a good mix of perlite, um, coconut coir, and potting soil, and then I'll slope it at an angle. And those twills that I was just talking about are the green shoots. I'll lay at an angle on the soil and then I'll put some lattice on the back here for all the excessive greens to grow on because sweet potato plants make massive, massive, massive mounds of greenery. 
Um, and then because this is in the sun, because it'll be well draining and because it'll be pretty hot, I'm pretty hopeful that I'll get a decent harvest of sweet potatoes this fall. Now I moved out the baby Saracenias that one of you guys sent me um, to transition to the outside world weather in preparation for planting them in the bog. Um, it's so far so good. You know, I don't like to shock them by just moving them from indoors into the colder or into the bog. So we're transitioning them here. Um, and now I'm just waiting for time to pass to be able to plant all my other flowers and stuff. So with the broccoli plants here, once they're a few inches tall, I'll have to thin them out as I overseeded to ensure that each of these little jiffy pots um, would get a plant for me to plant. So that'll be happening probably in a week or two, I would imagine. So now that I've gotten most of my work in the greenhouse out here done, I've gone ahead and started some sugar peas and some spinach as well as a mescaline mix of salad greens. Let's go look at some fish in the basement and just see how everyone's doing. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. I hope a bunch of you will join me in Hadfield, PA at Reef to Rift Aquarium Store this Saturday where I will be lecturing and doing a live demo on using natural materials in an aquarium to facilitate breeding. So if you guys are interested, more information can be found on my website. Um, hope to see a bunch of you there. Mm -hmm.